Really, really uh, pleased to, to be on the session today. Today we're talking about how to avoid the comparison trap. Wow, it's going to be an interesting subject. Really, really looking forward to it. So I'm the, the founder, the MD of Value. Absolutely delighted to, to be part of this today. And I'm absolutely delighted, even more delighted, how many times can I say delighted within 30 seconds, to have Joe join us today. <laughs> Hi, Joe. How are you doing? I'm, I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So for those that don't know Joe, Joe's actually executive assistant to myself. Uh, Joe, you and I have been working together for a, a number of months now, um, been really, really successful. So um, thank you very much for that. Uh, Joe, you've worked with some of the, the major thought leadership players in the UK, but you've also worked with many, many small and micro businesses, helping them out on their their operation so uh absolutely brilliant to to have you join us today so thank you very much for taking thank the time to, to join us thank you for it's, inviting me on <laughs> you're very very welcome it's wonderful to hear from anybody else as well uh so please do drop a hi in the comments let us know how you're doing let us know whether it's nice and sunny where you are um whether it's cold whether you're tired you want a holiday anything about it come on let's just get a little bit of interaction there i can actually see that kate my wife um it's just put good to see you both on there so thank you kate that's giving me a heads up that we're going live which is brilliant <laughs> honestly after last month the tech went horribly wrong joe it did it went horribly horribly wrong so i was a little bit wary of this so i actually said to kate drop me a message and stick your, your head through through the door and just give me a thumbs up which is just done to tell us everything's working well which that's is brilliant awesome. thank you very much so where do we start Right, so last month um, you did a wonderful live. We did have a technical hitch, but then we we sorted it. Um, but it was a wonderful live, and the content was brilliant because you talked about finding your why, why that was important to us, not just as business owners, but just personally as people, why it's important to know where we're going and where we're heading and how that will sort of help us with our focus. Um, I think the best thing I took from that was that one exercise you gave at the end where you said we need to ask ourselves, I wake up every morning too, and I do that because, you know, and we had to fill in those gaps and I thought that was quite powerful. Um, but today, I guess it's, it's we wanna know how can we avoid the comparison trap? That's something we do a lot as business owners. And I was just wondering what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, to be honest, the, the why part last month, that's continued with so many of our clients over the last month since we did that. Using uh, the, the analogy that Paul Dunn uh, kindly gave me just before the session there, I wake up every morning to dot, 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 and then add the word so that dot, dot, dot. I actually did it with my next door neighbor a couple of uh, nights ago, and it was really, really interesting just to get people's opinions on it. So please do continue to do that. That's really, really helpful. The All of these sessions are recorded. Uh, there's a blog going live. I think it's next week all about that as well. So mm -hmm. if you're not sure what the heck we're talking about, about the why, please do refer back to that video. Please do refer back to that blog. But the comparison trap. Mm something that's really really close to my heart to be perfectly honest i'm a huge believer that a lot of us end up comparing ourselves to other businesses to other people to celebrities to to everybody else in the world and then COVID came along and we couldn't have the biggest best businesses that we wanted the government forced our businesses to close in some examples other businesses succeeded massively, yeah, because they were they were dealing with things that were required during COVID. Hand job as a as a prime example there, but other businesses, hospitality, just shut the doors. Hmm. How did that actually make us all feel as individuals? Did it make us feel worthy? Did it make us feel better about ourselves? Did it actually make us feel mm, all right? Yeah, life isn't really that good. Life isn't really that bad. What did it actually do? And when I've been talking to clients, what we've actually got is over the last 20 months, can we really believe it's 20 months now? But over the last 20 months, a lot of clients, a lot of friends of mine have said that they feel like a failure. Mm. Now, a failure is a massive, massive word. Mm. It's something that's so sad to hear. It has mm. all sorts of connotations. But why are they a fa failure? Is it because COVID has shut their business? Is it because actually their business will never recover? Is it because they're looking at other people on Instagram mm. and they're saying, you know what, they're living the best life they've ever had? 
why am I not doing this? Are we comparing ourselves to other people? I think we are. As mm -hmm. a society, I think we do it. We'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit later on. But how many of us actually feel 100% about ourselves? Just drop it in the chat if you feel 100% about yourself. Why do you think it's such an issue? What do you think is, 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 is causing that stem? Why people are doing that? I think a huge part to me is Instagram. It's social media. Mm. It's Facebook. It's Clubhouse. It's all of the the news, the television. Let's just uh, cut off a, a few of them, right? How many of us look at Instagram on a daily basis and think, I should be abroad. I should have a bigger car. Mm. I should be wearing the designer clothes. Mm. I should have the better looking partner. All of these things. How many of us actually do that? A lot. A lot of us. How many of us go on Facebook and say, look, I've done this. Aren't I doing brilliant? How many of us are actually using social media in the right way? I genuinely, genuinely believe that social media and the media, and I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a second, but I believe that social media and the media actually starts to bring us down as people. Mm. I genuinely do. I believe that other people that we're talking to sometimes bring us down mm. because we feel inadequate, because we compare ourselves to them. I do genuinely believe that is an issue at times. So I think you've got a, a few things. I think you've got Instagram, you've got your competitors. How many business owners actually compare themselves to their competitors and say, well, my competitors are living their best life. My competitors are making loads of money. Are they actually making loads of money? Mm -hmm. Are they living their best life? Or is that just what they're putting out on social media? Mm -hmm. Is it just the image that they're portraying for themselves? Mm -hmm. How many of us are actually experiencing that? If I look at other accountants out there, some of them have their best life ever. <laughs> when you see some of the Instagram, when you see some of the Facebook posts there, I'm doing this and my clients are doing that. Mm, really? Yeah, back in the real world, we've got some wonderful, amazing clients and you look at some of what they're doing. I always remember a, a point where I, I spoke to a client a few years ago and the client said, support all the competitors and they're doing really, really badly. So the market's really down. Right, okay. You do realize your sales are up 47 percent i think it was uh -huh. so the reason all your competitors are doing really badly is because you're doing really good yeah <laughs> so stop speaking to your competitors because it's bringing you down focus yeah. on what you were good at was the advice i gave that was around about five years i gave that advice yeah i remember it's, exactly who it was it's really funny because how many of us do that we're focusing so much on on what everybody else is doing that we're not realizing how well we're doing or how well we could be doing if we just focused on running our own race a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think our generation, we we're using social media, we're using the media, we use digital tools so so much. But one of the things that we don't do is we don't speak to people anymore. Kind of ironic we're doing this over social media. I know. I It'll be followed that. up on our email, it'll be followed up on our blog, just like the Y sessions were last month. But I tell you what, I really enjoyed doing. I really enjoyed talking to our clients. Mm. I really enjoyed talking to our team about their why, their purpose, what they were trying to do. So, yes, you're going to have things like this where it's better to get it out on social media. But ultimately, what you can then do is then have the human conversations about it. Mm. But our generation is using more digital tools than we've ever used before in life. But actually, if we forgot how, how to be human, I do genuinely believe that that is the case. And that worries me a little bit, to be perfectly honest. It worries me that actually we're, a lot of us are working remotely. We don't have that human contact anymore. How do we do that? I remember many, many years ago, hopefully kids are not watching this anymore, but many, many years ago when I was a lot younger and I was single, if I want to go out and I want to meet somebody, I'll go to the pub. I'll have a conversation. Now, apparently, I've got no idea for definite. You swipe left or you swipe right. I don't know what you do, but that's how you meet somebody. Really? It's not really how you meet someone. I <laughs> hope it's not. I genuinely hope anyway. it's not. Yeah, I genuinely hope it's not. But actually, are we chasing the instant gratification mm. rather than actually trying to get the praise in person? Mm. Rather than actually get the feedback in person? Are we getting that instant gratification? We're chasing that tick, that like, that heart, that hug on social media. What are we trying to do? 
are we actually doing this for the right reasons or are we actually taking that step back and acknowledging that you know what we don't need to compare ourselves to everybody else Mm. we don't need to compare ourselves to everybody else i think that's a major that's a major takeaway there is that people forget we are enough each each and every one of us is who we are and we are enough um everybody thinks they have to be someone else or they have to and that is the comparison trap isn't it and it's, it's like actually no you don't you just need to learn to be yourself and um, what's some what's some tips you've got that we can help to do that i think one of the things i've sat in the same room for the last 20 months apparently and behind me i had the obligatory bookshelf it was just over that shoulder it was full of books and the books told us how we had to have bigger businesses we had to have better businesses we had to be the biggest and the best that we could ever possibly be you notice that those books have gone actually mm-hmm. those books are actually in one of those cupboards now the ones that i still believe in the ones i still use i think we've got to identify what our why is what our purpose is the stuff we talked about last month and when we know what we're trying to achieve then actually realize as you said we are enough we've got to find out who we want to be who we want our business to be and then we've got to acknowledge that you know what maybe we're good enough today Mm. and compare ourselves today with how we were yesterday Mm. instead of comparing ourselves today with how we want to be in 15 years time or whatever it might be Mm. let's compare take those small steps take that one percent growth and actually develop yourself as you're going let's give you some some tips some advice i guess yeah first one i've I've blathered on about it a little bit here realize how social media is actually affecting your life affecting your moods there's a really powerful button on facebook it's called unfollow (laughs) unfriend there's an even better one it says snooze for 30 days (laughs) brilliant right honestly i go on and if somebody says something i think ah you know what i can't really be bothered with it yeah unfollow so snooze for 30 days you don't see any of that stuff anymore right Mm. follow the people that actually are going to inspire you Mm. follow the people that mean something to you follow the people that actually can help you to get to where you want to be realize how the press affects your moods joe did you notice that there was a huge fuel shortage in the uk about two three weeks ago something like that i think so i heard something about it was all over the news isn't it it was all over the news I couldn't yeah. get to school for the cues. <laughs> exactly, right? Where did that come from? Now, mm. most of the people that I speak to say that that came from the press. Mm. The press put a scare story out. Yes, there were some areas that were running out of fuel. The press put a story out, and all of a sudden, in okay. Chessie Street, where I live, guess what? We ran out of fuel. Really? Yeah. Never ran out of fuel before. Come on, right? What else did they do? I'm just going to... Got today's newspaper, right? The biggest backlog, uh, the backlog of the biggest port forces the ships to turn away. That's in the Times, right? It's not even a red top, it's in the Times, right? That's great until they actually announced this morning. So that's in this morning's paper. They announced this morning that actually the vote in the port again, it was a short term issue. Yeah. But the press say we've got a massive problem. The port actually said it'll probably fix itself within the next week. Come on. Yeah. Mm. Focus on the positive stuff. Focus mm. on the stuff that's important. Realize that social media, who you interact with, the miserable people in our lives. Let's be honest, we've all got them, right? The miserable people in our lives. Let's cut them out. Let's mm. snooze them for 30 days. Let's surround ourselves with positive people and limit the amount of negativity we can get to our life. You, you and I both work with a, a guy called Brad Burton. Uh, June last year, I think it was June, July last year, I had a conversation with Brad, and I was saying, actually, I'm suffering a little bit here. Um, I want to, I want to do more, but actually, I feel like I can't do any more, right? And I realised that part of my problem, he likened it to a bottle of pop. The bottle of pop had been shook, and I needed to let the pressure out. Mm, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, you remember the conversation that I had with him? And mm-hmm. what he actually suggested was that I 
delete the news apps on my phone. It suggested that I deleted some of the social media stuff. Mm -hmm. it suggested that I actually stop watching the news every five minutes. It was actually about finding out what was important to me. It was about regaining the time there. Darren just come on and said, don't compare yourselves to others. It's when you start to lose confidence. Darren, you're 100% bang on right. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, absolute 100% right there. You don't compare yourself to others because there's, there's so many of us do that. There's a wonderful quote about that, actually, that's just reminded me. It says, um, I don't know who, who, who wrote it, so I'm sorry for not knowing who to credit, but it sort of says, um, when I compare myself to others, I feel bitter. But when I compare myself to myself, I feel better because you, you should only ever aim to do better than you did yesterday because it, it i'll never be you so there's absolutely no point in myself trying to compare myself to you so spot on that's exactly it that's exactly it. i love that joe absolutely love that absolutely love that so positive interaction surround yourself with good people people that are going to help you people that are going to drag you up instead of push you down mm. practice gratitude it's big for that's me it. That's massive. I know that you've you've talked about that for a long time, Joe. You've talked about that a long time. I Be proud of what you've already superpower. got. It's a superpower, yeah. gratitude, and people don't realise that, and they need to. Sorry, but go on. Interrupted. A hundred percent. No, I, I, it's exactly what you're talking about there. You know what? We've got a home. We've got food. We've got our families. We've got we've got what we've got now. Let's be grateful for what we've got today. Mm. We don't have to have a bigger house. We don't have to have more food. We don't have to have whatever it might be. Mm. We can inspire to have that stuff, but we don't have to have it. We'd be grateful for what we've got today. I walked along the streets of Newcastle last week and I came across three people that were living on the streets. It was cold, it was wet, and it was raining. I was coming home to my warm house. Yeah. yeah, I've got to be grateful for what I had there. I have got to be grateful. If you complain about the petrol crisis, guess what? You're lucky enough to have a car. Well, some people don't have cars. Exactly. And that's the problem yeah. with the comparison trap is that you're always, if you're comparing yourself to whoever it is that you're comparing yourself to, you're always looking outward. You're looking at what you haven't got. It's a negative outlook on your life. Um, it puts you down. But the minute you start, thinking with an attitude of gratitude, as it were, you start focusing on yourself, you start focusing on what you've got, immediately the mood turns from a negative to a positive. So it's actually a superpower, it really, really is. I believe in it anyway. I genuinely believe <laughs> in it as well. As cliche as it sounds. Yeah. No, it sounds absolutely fantastic to me. So practice gratitude, focus on what you actually want. So what's your why? What's your purpose? We talked about your why and your purpose. At the last session, Joe, you and I had a conversation just before I did the live. Yeah, and that's why it was so important that we got it right. We've got to have that why. We've got to have that purpose. And when you've got it, link your why to what you're doing on a daily basis. Link your purpose to what you're doing on a daily basis. Again, another one that I heard, I think it was Brad. It might have been a guy called Nas. I'll talk about my, my weight loss in a second. But one of them were talking about, to me, me personally, a cup. And if you imagine, hopefully I won't spill my cup of coffee all over me here. you got a cup. The cup in your life is, I'd say, that full right now. Your work capacity is at that level there. Mm -hmm. Something else comes along. What have we actually got here? We've got family. We've got friends. We've got work. we got, this is your normal day-to-day -day stuff. Something else comes along. Petrol crisis. Mm. Yeah, whatever it might be customer kicking off somebody not paying us what happens is the liquid that's in your cup overflows mm. we've all done that we've all been stupid where we've put put the the cup under the sink or under the tap and it's overflowed yeah we've all done that the bit that i've realized lately is that what comes out isn't the stuff that actually is going in mm. it's the stuff that's important yeah. to us yeah. so it's actually our family time that comes out, mm. our integrity that comes out, our time with our friends that come out, whatever it might be, that's really important to us. What we've got to do is we've got to have a look at our cups and our lives and say, actually, I want to fill my cup 
mm. with stuff that's meaningful to me. I don't want to just let too much come into me because you know what? As Darren was saying there, you lose confidence in yourself, mm. but also you burn out. In my experience, mm. you burn out. Mm. I think the, the other thing that's really, really important is understanding who you want to be. Yeah. This Joe, you and I do a, a program called Kingmaker, uh, Kingmaker Plus now. But one of the things that I, that I found around about November last year was that I was somebody I didn't really want to be in certain aspects of my life. I was a lot bigger. Those that see me talk on a live a year ago, I was a lot bigger. Those that follow me on Facebook personally will notice that I put a, a post out on Facebook. It wasn't for likes. I actually put in the post, this is not for likes. This to try and inspire other people. Mm. But I've lost around about 17 kilos That's amazing. in a year. That's amazing. Thank you. I'm actually, I'm a person that I want to be now because I'm losing the weight. I'm going for a walk most days. I did a marathon this year. I know. <laughs> I walked a marathon, yeah. Naz would kill me for saying I walked it, but I did a marathon this year. These are all things because it's who I want to be. Mm. It's because I want to be true to myself. And when you know who it is that you want to be, your why, your purpose, then you can actually understand who you want to be and you can actually follow your own journey. I'm a living testament of that. Well, guaranteed, yeah. if you compared yourself to Mo Salah, you wouldn't have done that marathon, but you didn't. So 100%. you compared yourself to yourself and look where you are yeah. now. So. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I'm a huge, huge fan of happiness today. Mm. Don't chase it. Mm. What have you got today? That gratitude stuff you were talking about there, Joe. Mm. What have you got today that you can be proud of, you can be pleased about? You can go, I achieved that. You can Do we chase, all have to? Sorry. You can, you can chase happiness, but you'll never catch it. It's kind of like a butterfly. Again, that's something I read. You know, it will just keep eluding you. And the minute you turn your attention away, the butterfly comes and lands right next to you. And that's what it's, it's that's what you've got to be. And I know it sounds a bit maybe utopian, but that's not what I'm trying to, you know, it is possible. It's all mindset and it's all how you view your life and how you choose to be every single day. It's a choice. Gratitude 100%. and happiness is a choice. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Sometimes circumstances will come along and <laughs> pardon my language, they'll bugger it up. But you know what? You got to identify what it is that makes you happy and then follow that. And look at your business and be proud of what you've achieved. I've worked with some clients that are sadly no longer here. Mm. Some clients have sadly passed away. I've been doing this for 20 odd years now. Mm. It happens. Right? It does happen. I'm not aware of any of those clients that have ever come back on their deathbed. They've ever turned around on the deathbed and went, yeah, I'm really pleased that I sent that email. I'm really <laughs> pleased I worked those extra hours. I'm really pleased that it's normally regret. Mm. It's normally, I wish I'd spent more time with my family. Mm. I wish I'd done this and earned some more money so I could have done that. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what's important to us. Mm. Find out what's important to our businesses and then follow that. I genuinely believe, is, as you say, happiness, don't chase it. If there it. Was, um, I'll ask you this. If there was one thing you wanted people to take out of today, like one thing to help everybody avoid the comparison trap, what would that one thing be? I think uh, those that know me know I love reading. I love, it's one of my new passions of the last 12 months is reading now. Um, one of the books that got recommended to me is a book by Stephen Bartlett. It's mm -hmm. called Happy Sexy Millionaire. Um, I'd never heard of it until it was recommended to me. I would highly recommend it. Um, I'm 67% according to my uh, mm -hmm. Kindle through it. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm reading it pretty much every day. I'll probably finish it at the end of this week. Mm -hmm. But there's a quote in there from Stephen Barlow. Let me just, I'm just going to look at it because I want to make sure I get it right. Mm. Maybe you've always been happy, but the world, social media, and external comparisons have convinced you that you can't possibly be. 
Oh, I love that. I really, really like that quote. Really, really like that quote. So that's Stephen Bartlett's Happy Sexy Millionaire. I would recommend the book for the 67% of it I've read so far. But you asked me a direct question. What's the one thing that I would do? Mm. I would follow on from the why that we found last month. Mm -hmm. I'd follow on from your purpose, your why, and I would live your own life. I would make sure that I don't let others overfill my cup where possible. There's always going to be some stuff that comes along and affects it. I COVID. No one would have predicted three years ago that COVID was going to happen mm. and businesses were going to shut down. That's You're never going to get the answer to that. But there is a lot of stuff that other people can impact us on. Mm. Maybe just realise that you have been happy and realise that other people make you unhappy. Maybe just realise that by comparing yourself, you can't be happy anymore. Well, actually, you're happy. You just don't realise that you are. One of the things that I see so many times and I read and I hear is that great things have become normal in yeah. social media. Travelling first class has become normal. Mm. Employing lots of people has become normal. You know what? It's exceptional what a lot of, of our clients do on a day-to-day -day basis. It's absolutely phenomenal what a lot of the value team do on a day-to-day -day basis. We've got Danielle, we've got Johnny. They've just finished all of the furlough claims for all of our clients for the last 20 months. I know. That's finished. They should be so proud. They should be so happy for everything that they've done. That's the stuff that's important is actually realise what impact you do make. Mm. What is it you're trying to achieve? And then go after that and don't let anybody else screw that up for you. Just make your day and everyone else's days better every single day. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. So, Joe, thank That's you it. very much for joining <laughs> us today. Um, thank you very welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you very, very much for joining us today. Thank you very much for everyone that's dropped us a comment. Um, it's always great to hear anybody's feedback, any thoughts, so please do post it on the, on the page. Um, we will get back. Uh, there's a, a couple of clients that asked if we would record this and share it. So yes, we'll we'll certainly do that. We'll put that this on the Facebook page. We'll also uh, make sure we turn it into a bit of a blog, and we'll we'll put the blog out there as well. So everyone's got that. Thank you very much to everybody who's commented, who's uh, who sent lovely messages through there. I can see a few on the screen. So thank you very much for that. Really do appreciate it. And we shall catch up with you next month. Next All month. Right, ha have a great day, everyone. Cheers. Bye. -bye.